European Parliament, uh, what intellectual property is, what a patent is, and I wouldn't go out and make a, a, a question of, from uh, people who are moving around. Uh, please tell me what the patent is. It will be a big problem for a lot of people to explain what it's really. Uh, so education and public uh, relation is very substantial for this area and on the other hand to bring the right solution. I think that what uh, we have to look and that was uh, a very core uh, issue in this debate and we should proceed with this kind of meetings. Uh, to get at least uh, solutions uh, to uh, get out of financial crisis, uh, get full employment, and uh, for European taxpayers, uh, a good solution. Thank you. Thank you. And um, um, I also in, the, in the last debate, we talked about uh, the customs. I was just, just thinking that uh, in your um, uh, approach, it's all about finding who is harming the law. Um, if you look in, in France, for example, when you have to put a product on the market there, a cosmetic product, you have to prove, you as a producer, that it doesn't harm anybody before you put it on the market. <laughs> so there's a way that we can get the people that bring products on the market here to prove that they don't infringe any intellectual property before they start? And maybe uh, you can answer that, uh, Georg. Uh, you have to differentiate between are those bringing a product on the market and believe that they legally bring it on the, on the market? In such cases, such a measure might help. But uh, in many, many cases, people know that they are infringing something, and we're talking about fees. And if people are knowing they are infringing something, they will try to be as close to the product as possible. Uh, this might also be, let's say, with quite similar names, similar packages, and things like that. And in that case, uh, uh, let's say, registration procedure wouldn't help at all. And I knew from cases uh, where companies had to withdraw and to pull back uh, products from the market just because they were diluted on the market with fake product and they had to face... Um, the danger of being sued for malfunction of the products. Okay. Another question. Um, uh, what uh, Mr. Witten has said earlier is that it actually the essence of a patent is about sharing information and being able to share information. Now, are we doing anything on our side to say if we would know more uh, what we have as knowledge in, in, in Europe uh, between the, the different countries, uh, we would have to actually start thinking about uh, copying from each other or helping each other by using patents? Well, uh, w one of the, the problems with the patent system is there are many, many people who hold patents who believe that they're uh, two things. They're trophies. Closer, closer. Um, move a bit closer. They're, they're trophies uh, to show the, so their inventiveness and their, their intellectual ability. And, and they're also uh, there to protect against other people who, who have patents and who are going to go out and, and uh, uh, sue them if they don't have patents in, in reply. And, and this is unfortunate because patents are far more than that. And uh, we, I believe that we need to have uh, a broader education in place to, so that uh, the, the general population understands really what uh, patents are about, what they're for. The, the Chinese have got education systems in, in their schools now where they... Uh, they're, they're teaching intellectual property. And, uh, Write your first claim kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite sure it goes that far, but yeah. Uh, uh, and it's all the way up through to, you know, uh, uh, executives and companies. Everyone yeah. is, is uh, educated to understand what patents, what intellectual property is about. Um, and I would see no harm in us following that model ourselves. No. So it goes back to what you were saying, is it's about education and finding it's back to our engineers that they know what patterns are and use them as a, as a source of knowledge. Okay, um, maybe I'll open the, the floor for the discussion. Yes, please. Thanks, Chair. My name is Roger O'Keefe. I'm in the European Commission Director General for Education and Culture. And the reason why I'm here is to learn because um, I'm responsible for the European Year of Creativity and Innovation. And already two years ago, over two years ago, and I was given this task, it seemed to me as a layman 
that for an effective innovation system to be in place, we needed to have widespread understanding of intellectual property issues. So I'm delighted to hear both what Mr. Ruby and what Mr. Whitten said about this. Uh, it seems evident that we, we do need to have understanding of intellectual property as one of the core competences for, our, for modern life. But uh, so I would hope that beyond this European year, we can take this agenda forward and develop a wider understanding. But it seems clear from what I've heard already today that it's a very complex area, not readily amenable to a uh, simple uh, transmission of, of, of the body of knowledge. I mean, I've already been learning just the different, you know, the, the different domains of intellectual property are, are quite, quite, quite diverse and sometimes may have different rules applying to them. Clearly, cost is a major factor. Um, I don't know to what extent the, uh, the unfortunate, uh, coming back to the, the Venice optician who ended up getting a US patent, I wondered, was that because his own government was trying to protect his right to be able to get a patent in Italian and it was cheaper for him to get a US patent in English than to get a European patent in English? And I say that with all the humility of a native English speaker. But it seems also clear that even if you do work your way through the, uh, the, 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 the jungle of intellectual property rights and, and acquire a patent, you're still only halfway there because of the cost of enforcement. Now, in Belgium, uh, as a householder, you can get legal protection insurance for small claims for a, a pittance. You pay, pay a few euros on your annual household insurance policy and you have a um, right to a certain, up to a certain amount to legal advice, uh, even including uh, litigation. Is there a market in, sorry, I'm trying to be sure, but I just wonder, is there a market in uh, insurance for protecting intellectual property? And if not, should there be? Yeah. In Belgium, it's even more. And you get, you get a serious tax deduction on the income you have from patents, which mm -hmm. has uh, just been launched, I think, last year. OK. Uh, we, yeah, please. about the possibilities to ensure patents. Uh, some, I think it was four or five years ago, uh, we tried to, uh, to set up such a project uh, in order to, to help companies. Uh, we failed in the concept state because uh, no insurance company actually was willing to take the risk because they said normally the companies themselves quite know which patents are endangered and so they won't get, say, a reasonable amount of uh, good cases to finance the bad ones, and therefore patent insurances for small-scale uh, things would be far too expensive. It would work for larger patent pools, for having something like, let's say, 200, 400 patents on, on something. And uh, there had been some, some, some models in, in Scandinavian countries, uh, but they worked, let's say, to a different extent. Because the problem is, let's say, of having something like a compulsory insurance or not. And, yeah, uh, compulsory insurances mean additional bureaucracy and won't be accepted by most of the patent holders. Can I, can I just add to that? Yes, please. Um, I was uh, doing some research on something else completely a few weeks ago, and I happened to come across a report which was uh, prepared for the European Commission by uh, uh, an organization called CJA Consultants Limited, and that was a review of patent litigation insurance. Um, I have a copy of the appendix, but I don't have the full report. 